We're going somewhere very deep in the Holy Spirit. And this realm of God that is pressing us to move out of the natural. Now, can we bring my chalkboard here? I, is it all right if I just speak by the Holy Spirit tonight? Yes. I won't, come on, is it all right? Yes. God is pressing us. People say sometimes, Brother Steve, you, you tend to keep pushing. Where are the green pastures and the still waters? I know where they are. They're on the other side. Come on. You don't want natural green pastures. And you don't want natural still waters. You want heavenly green pastures. And heavenly still waters. Many people in the body of Christ... Can, can I share with you what the Holy Spirit is sharing with me? Yes. Hallelujah. That's what I like about Saturday nights. Come on, amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Whew. I got my nice Easter message. Well, it's a resurrection message tomorrow. I'm going to speak to you prophetically tonight. What the Lord showed me is that there is a line between natural and the spiritual. Now, many people, most of God's people, I dare say, gosh, I'm going to try to be positive here tonight, <laughs> but most of God's people are stuck, even in the charismatic Pentecostal churches, are stuck under the line of the natural. And even when they come to church, and even when they're seeking God, they're simply seeking God for maybe spiritual breakthroughs or to a dimension, uh, supernatural interventions to simply bring them back to a level of where they feel normal in the natural. They're seeking God for money to pay their bills. Come on. They're seeking God for healing for their physical bodies. Huh? They're seeking God for restoration, for broken relationships. They're seeking God for deliverance. Come on. Amen? Amen. Deliver A N C E. Deliverance. Boy, I'm just, my writing is really scary today. Now, what they're trying to get back to, yes, Lord, what they're trying to get back to is the place where they have enough money to pay their bills, where they have enough healing to no longer feel pain. Come on, am I with you? Come on, you with me here? Where they have enough restoration that they've got a decent marriage and that their kids are, 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 are not estranged in their relationships that they have enough deliverance that they're not bound by sin and by uh, oppression and by addictions. They're trying to get back to a place of what they consider as normal. And that is the, that is the ultimate high end. Now, how many you know the, the mass majority of the people in the body of Christ aren't even here? They're not even into to the, to the break-even point. Huh? And we, oh, Lord Jesus, yes. So we've got, we got meetings and services and conferences and classes and counseling and all of these things working full time to get God's people back to the break-even line. Come on, this is the mass majority of American Christianity. Right? Come on, am I telling the truth here? Come on, am I telling the truth here? Yeah. Now, if that, that 
if this is the ultimate of where our Christian experience is going to be, where God intended for us to be, then praise God. We should spend all of our time. We should spend all of our energy. We should spend all of our effort and resources trying to get these things going so we can get back to the point where we meet a place that we feel like we're satisfied and it's normal. But I want to tell you tonight, that is not the end of your Christian experience. That wasn't even meant to be the main focus of your Christian experience. Huh? In fact, I don't know. Are you ready for this? Come on, are you ready for this? You weren't supposed to have to spend that much time on it. Can I prove it to you? Come on, can I prove it to you? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Come on, Matthew chapter 6 tells us with. He says, don't worry, verse 32. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. I want you to see this real quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord. I was feeling bad for you. I was. I said, Lord, I've been a little heavy recently. I said, I was feeling bad for you. So I just said, Lord, give me what the people need. Give me what they need. Apparently, this is what it is. Hallelujah. Verse 31, watch this. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. Why? The Gentiles are in the natural. All these things that the natural man seeks. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you're not even going to have to worry about these things. All these things shall be added unto you. So what he's saying is the natural man, the Gentiles, keep seeking for all of these things. But I'm not wanting you to seek those things. My God, I want you to seek the kingdom of heaven. Someone say the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. And his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. If I could ever get you out of spending your life trying to get these natural things fixed and I could get you over into the realm of the spirit, you're never even going to have to worry about those natural things. They're going to take care of themselves. Come on. How many want to get to the place where you stop having to believe, face it out just to get the bills paid? Come on, we you go, oh, glory to God. We are just going to have to stop where, where, where you feel like you're constantly under the gun and under the battle and under the assault of the enemy. And it's just like you're fighting off and fighting off and maybe you get a few days of rest or a few weeks or a few months. You get to breathe and then you're right back in the battle and you're right back staying under this line just trying to get these things taken care of. Am I talking to anybody here tonight? Come on, how many want to go to a higher level? Come on, how many want to go to a higher level? Now, here's the challenge we have in the body of Christ. Because this is going to take tremendous spiritual energy to shift from this realm of ministry into the realm of ministry that is focused on the kingdom of heaven and focused on the righteousness of God. God never intended for you to live here as a Christian. Now, when you first got saved, that's where you are. Thank God we learn how to walk with God in these elements, but that's not where God ever intended for us to be limited. God never intended for you to be limited to the natural. God intended for you to live a life of the supernatural. (laughs) Woo! 
Somebody say God. God. <laughs> I feel it so strong. Say it again. God, God. intended for me intended to live a life, life. of the supernatural. supernatural. It's in the spirit. A life of the supernatural. Now, now, can we smack the devil here? Yes. Come on. Can we smack the devil here? Most of us have even relegated and limited the supernatural simply to meeting these needs. But I, I want to tell you, most of what, a lot of what Jesus did in the early church, or in, in the early church in the New Testament, yes, the supernatural did go and meet those needs, but they did so much more than simply meet needs. He was trying to translate people out of the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of his dear son. Come on. Out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God is a supernatural God and is one that must be worshipped as having supernatural power. And he never intended for you and me to live a life that was not flooded with the supernatural. Supernatural was never about just getting your needs met. It wasn't just about you getting delivered. Do you understand? That's the limitation of the supernatural in most people's minds is if I can get enough of the supernatural to get me back to the normal line. Come on, am I telling the truth here? That's not what I've been preaching about. That's not what we're going to Ephesians chapter 1 all about. It's so far beyond. Thank God. Hey, if you got these needs, we want to see those needs met. We're going to pray for the sick tomorrow morning. Glory be to God. We saw miracles this last Sunday night. Woo! Man, they were incredible. I'm telling you, we had a man here seven years ago, had surgery on his neck. He lost his, 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 his uh, spit glands, his, his saliva glands, had no saliva. Can you imagine no saliva for seven years? But right here in the service Sunday night, God did a creative miracle and gave him new glands. Woo! We had three people with very strong degrees of hearing loss. God popped their ears open. Oh, my. Oh, there were so many miracles. Dear woman, 18 years, neck, hardly could move her neck because of a severe injury. 18 years ago, bam, neck totally healed by the power of God. I'm talking creative miracles. Got even more testimonies we're going to share tomorrow morning. Thank God for that. We need that. We need to bring that to a lost and dying world to demonstrate the love of God by helping them get their needs met supernaturally. But it's so much beyond that. That's where we've limited ourselves to. That's the place we've risen up to is if we only can get those things. Now a lot of the church is trying to get those needs met without even the supernatural. Come on, amen. Oh, Lord. Somebody say, I serve. No, no, we're going to change that. Let's go to, I, want, I take it a little deeper. Let's go, let's go to John 17 for a moment. <laughs> Woo. John 17, verse 21 from the, Amplif- or from the King James Version. John 17, verse 21 from the King James Version. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Everybody say, in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given. Now, I don't know if he, thank you, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Huh? I don't know about you, but when he starts talking about the glory, that doesn't seem to me like he's talking about simply this line right here of getting to the realm where we're even on the natural realm. Come on, you can get all your finances met. You can have a perfectly healthy body. You, you can sit there and have great relationships. You can sit there and be free from demonic oppression and possession and still never be walking in the glory of God. But Paul said this, that the mystery of the gospel is this, Christ in you, the hope of being normal. No. 
Huh? Come on. It's Christ in you, the hope of? Glory. Christ in you, the hope of? Glory. Christ in you, the hope of? Glory. Just having a good paying job? No. Having a good education? No. Come on. Just having a happy marriage? No. Come on. Do you understand how... Uh, such a lo- please I'm not trying to be critical but we've got to get the mask off here tonight come on do you understand how low of a level we're living at do you understand what's going to be you know why I put up that billboard I didn't think we were going to get I thought people would run away from us because of that billboard but I wasn't putting up a billboard advertising Easter to try to get an Easter crowd I was trying to go after a demon spirit because that's exactly what it is Come on, y'all hearing me? That's exactly what it is when we have so subjugated the church of Almighty God and we have relegated it down to where we have to use eggs to draw people in. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. When the best thing we have to offer the world is a little Easter egg hunt. Oh, you're getting too, oh, you're Brother Steve, you're just getting too legalistic, you're getting too hard. I'm not getting hard. I'm telling you, heaven cries. When we've got the resurrected Christ that's supposed to be in our midst. And instead of having those children in a service where hands are being laid on them and the power of God's falling on them, they're running around finding little candy. Come on, it's time we call this thing the way it is. We're so bounded to the natural. That's why we have to put on all of these concerts and we got to keep placating. Oh, but Brother Steve, they get the crowds. That's it. Crowds are easy. Come on. Crowds are easy. I just, you know, one of the biggest crowds in this city is these bars up here come on have you driven up on Saturday night bars are packed right up the street right up here getting a crowd is easy you get enough in the carnal you get enough in the natural you get enough in the flesh you'd stop even trying to press people to go to the glory you can get a crowd but a crowd will not change society You've seen what I've got to say it. I've got to say it. Come on. We're in trouble here in America right now. I said we're in trouble. Do you understand the flood tide of the spirit of homosexuality that has broken loose in the last 10 months? Huh? I told you and a lot of people got mad at me. Some people quit the church. When I told you when President Obama opened his mouth, he released a demon spirit on this country. When he said gay marriage, he was in support of that it all of a sudden have you noticed now it went from if you're now against gay marriage from that moment now all of a sudden you're a hater now they're pushing it CNN almost on a daily basis is running stories on how terrible it is for the discrimination against homosexuality they're shoving it down our throats they're shoving it down our throats many states right now they're trying to pass laws right now you don't know this they're trying to pass laws to force churches to hire homosexuals And I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. Mark these words down. Legislation on the national level is going to be proposed that if a church does not accept homosexuals and if they preach against it, they'll lose their tax-exempt status. You watch it, it's coming. I'm telling you by the Spirit, it's coming. Huh? Huh? But standing up protesting homosexuality is not going to do it. Come on. Marching down the streets. It's not going to do it. God never intended us to do it through legislation. He never intended us to do it through the court system. He never intended us to do it through protest marches. He intended for a people that would so walk in his power and in his glory that the spirit of God would come and drive away the darkness. Somebody say, God, God. never intended intended for me me. to suffer Suffer. any defeats. defeats. See, 
But until we start getting into the realm of the kingdom of heaven. Oh, my Lord. Someone say real authority. Say it again. Say real authority. Say it again. Real authority. Woo. Till we start focusing on the kingdom of heaven. Till we start becoming the carriers of the glory of God. As long as the church of Jesus Christ is relegated to spending most of its time, its resources, its energy, its teaching times, just trying to get people back to normal, the devil has got us running around like little chickens with our heads cut off. Huh? He's got us wasting our time. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> I know this sounds hard. But how many want to get? Jesus said, he said, come unto me, all you that are heavy, laden, and burdened, I will give you for my, is what? My what? And my burden is? My yoke is, Easy. and my burden is. Nice. How many of you honestly feel that way? Come on, most of us feel like his, it's, it's burdensome. Life is hard. Life is heavy. Because as long as you're striving in the natural, it's going to be tough. Whew. Let's go to... Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 for a moment. Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Shoo. Hallelujah. Somebody say, there's got to be an easier way. Come on, say, there's got to be an easier way. There is. <laughs> Come on, there is. Come on, there is. I said there is. Yes. Somebody say it's in the spirit. In the spirit. Say it again. Say it's in the spirit. In the spirit. Huh? <laughs> and that's where you're going. I said that's where you're going. I said that's where you're going. Come on, that's where you're going. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2, verses beginning with verse 4. My speech and my preaching. Actually, let's back up. Let's back up to verse 1. I, I just want to see this in context. Are you getting something tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Didn't have my first point, second point, third point message with its nice little story. Come on, amen. Didn't come to try to wow you on all my understanding of the Greek and the Hebrew. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined, I made a choice. I was smart. He was an educated man. He was on the road to become the high priest. He was highly educated. I could have, I was highly educated not only in doctrine. I was highly educated in the world. I could have come and tried to impress you with how culturally aware I was. Oh, my. Come on, amen. I could have tried to impress you with how much I understood about this thing and that thing. This is the Apostle Paul. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. <laughs> And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now, 
That's a, that's a powerful thing. I didn't come to you in my own natural strength. Come on. I didn't come to you in my own natural abilities. I didn't come to you with all the little technicals that I had all figured out. Am I talking to anybody here tonight, my Lord? <laughs> come on. I didn't come to you relying upon all of those things. See, that's why the devil's lied to so many of us and said, well, look, you're not educated enough. You don't have enough biblical knowledge or you don't have enough experience or you don't have enough that. Do you understand? The apostle Paul who had all that said, I count all those things as rubbish. I'm not relying upon those things. I'm not leaning upon those things. And I'm not even going to use those things to do the work of God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. You know, God wasn't dependent upon your own strength, God's not dependent upon your own abilities. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize education. I'm not trying to minimize all of that. But you can have the best education in the world. You can have all the training in the world. You can have all the skills in the world. But you're not going to do the work of God. You're not going to be able to get people out of the natural into the glory of God by natural means. Wow. Come on. You're not going to bring people in worship into the throne of God by natural means. That's why you can have an amazing singer. They can sing wonderfully, but they're not going to bring people. Oh, they might bring people to a high emotional experience, but they're not going to bring them into a face-to-face -face encounter with the God who transforms them in a moment. And that's why you can have a guy who can hardly sing, who picks up a kazoo but understands in the spirit. Someone say in the spirit. In the spirit. Say it again, say in the spirit. in the spirit. Say it again, say in the spirit. In the spirit. And man, whoo, everything can change. Whoo. Yeah. Watch this. Verse four. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of Power. Someone say power. power. Say dunamis. <laughs> say miracle working power. Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And somebody say the devil's a liar. Say it again. Say devil, you're a liar. Now, we've got to also get out of our minds. <laughs> Come on. we got to get out of our minds that that promise right there, and even that principle right there, is relegated to a few superstars. Oh, that's another Benny Hinn or another Moore Cirillo or, or another this one or another that one. Oh, they're, they're, there's the few select that have that special anointing of God to walk in signs and wonders. That's not what God was talking about. You say, how am I going to get there? Verse 9. <laughs> but, <as it, laughs> but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Mm, mm, mm. For them that love him mm, hang on hang on hang on for them that for them that why did he make that the point right there he said I hadn't seen ears not heard mind is not conceived neither did enter the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, but the, only, the Spirit is only going to release, reveal those things to those who love God. Yes. <laughs> you say, oh, brother Steve, I love God. People say that all the time, and they don't. 
Say, how do you know? The Bible tells me so. Jesus gave me the criteria for love. He said, if any man loves me, he will obey my commands. <laughs> so if you're not obeying God's commands, it's the sign that you don't love him. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. That's why I said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his, and his, and all these things will be added unto you. Why? Because when you love him, when you obey his commands, you're gonna, he's going to open your eyes and you're going to see into the spirit realm. <laughs> You're going to be translated out of the natural realm. You're not going to look at your circumstances any longer through the eyes of the natural. You're going to look at them through the eyes of the spirit. And when you see them through the eyes of the spirit, you're no longer going to be limited. Oh, Father God. Father God. Father God. Father God. Someone said the devil's a liar. Come on, are you with me here tonight? Woo! Go... <laughs> How many of you remember the story when Elisha, the man of God, was in a town and his servant got up early in the morning and went out and saw the armies that had come up against them surrounding the whole town. How many of you know that's not a good day? <laughs> got an army trying to arrest two people. Do you realize how much of the enemy's power it takes to try to even take down one man of God? Or one woman of God? Come on, ladies, help me out here tonight. Come on, do you realize it's not a one-on-one -on -one match between you and the devil? Do you realize how much demon power that if you're walking in the spirit of God, do you realize how much demon power the enemy has to muster to even come against you? Nineteen seventy. My spiritual father, Morris Cirillo, was over in India holding a big crusade. The government decided last minute they didn't want him to preach. So they sent out one thousand military men to arrest one man. Now, Brother Cirillo was very smart. He had learned how to close his ear to the negative forces of doubt and unbelief. You were under orders that if there was a negative report, government was going to do something. If there was threats about his life or threats against his safety, you were not to tell him. So his top people knew all about this. They came to pick him up, but they were held to silence. Thank God for obedient uh, servants. Come on, amen. Why some of you feel so necessary to tell everybody every negative report you hear is beyond me. Problem is you become a part of the problem. You perpetuate it. Oh, Pastor Steve, I heard someone saying this, and I just, you know, I think you just didn't know what they're talking about. Why? Come on, now you just perpetuated the problem. You just gave power to that thing. Oh, my Lord. Come on, somebody, amen. You shouldn't have listened to it in the first place. Come on, you shouldn't have listened to it in the first place. Hallelujah. Wow, Lord. So they pick him up. He gets in the car. Man's nervous, all sweating bullets. He knows they're there to arrest him. Brother Cyril's all happy, prayed up. Come on, amen? Come on, how many you ever been there? You've been all prayed up in the spirit. Then a circumstance comes, and all of a sudden, you feel like your faith is violated. That's why we get to learn how to stay in the spirit. <laughs> Woo! So he sees these military people, around, and he turns to, his, turns to his assistant, associate. He says, oh, praise God. The government sent all these military out to protect me. 
So they drive up, and these guys are standing in lines, rows, blockading. They were ordered, stand several deep, where 30 wide, blockade, don't allow Dr. Cirillo on that platform at all. They're standing there blocking. He gets out of his car. They're blocking the way to the steps. He walks out, looks at them, and he goes like this, salutes them. <laughs> they all look at each other a little bit confused. They salute him back, turn sideways, and make a path for him to walk right up on the platform. <laughs> Woo! He gets up there. The main head military guy, he's all freaked out. He's like, what are you doing? Now he's on the platform. He grabbed the microphone and immediately started preaching. So he took those thousand men, he sent most of them to surround the, uh, the entire crowd. He said, on my signal, you disperse the crowd. And he said, took 30 of the top men with him. He said, and when I give the signal, we're going to rush the platform and we're going to arrest this man. He held his hand up. Dr. Shriller's preaching. He gave the signal. They all went to move forward and they hit an invisible wall. They couldn't get into the crowd. They couldn't get up on the platform. Dr. Srilla preached for about 20 minutes the saving message of Jesus Christ. And when he gave the altar call, 90% of those military people took their hats off and prayed the prayer of salvation. Hallelujah. Do you understand how much of the enemy's power it takes to even challenge one servant of God? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody speak in other tongues for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus. Now, whoo, somebody say the devil's a liar. Say it again. Say, devil, you're a liar. So here we've got Elijah. Servant goes out, sees these military forces come up, surrounded the city. He runs back in all freaked out. What are we going to do? Elijah didn't even take a breath. He didn't have to go into intercessory prayer. Huh? He didn't have to go into a time of fasting. Why? He already had been. Hey, when the battle comes, it's too late to get ready. Come on, you better be ready before the battle comes. You better have not been spending all night up watching... My Lord, come on, come on. That's why so many Christians are so defeated. They spend all their time feeding their flesh, and when the slightest little battle comes up, they're knocked down. They got no power. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Yeah. Somebody say the devil's a liar. Say it again, the devil's a liar. Devil's a liar. He turned to his servant. He said, don't be afraid. More, many more of those that are with us that are with them. Then he prayed a powerful prayer. He said, Father, open my servant's eyes and let him see what I see. I'm telling you, let me put, can I put a couple, can I drop another bomb in your spirit? You need to find yourself some servants of God that see things in the spirit realm. You need to get close to them and then you need to ask God, let me see what they see. Because when they see stuff you don't see, they're going to act weird. They're going to act different than you think they could, should. They're going to do things you didn't think were right. You, they're going to do things you didn't think were, 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 were wise. Why? Because you're still seeing things in the natural. And you're just trying to get back to this place. And they're not interested in getting back to the normal. They're not interested in the status quo. They're not interested in the comfortable place. They're after one thing. They're after the manifestation of the glory of God. Because only the manifestation, the end time manifestation of the sons of God walking in the glory of God is going to turn this thing around. 
drunk. What good is it? What good is it if we fill our churches and the people we got in there are so bound up day to day that they're so weak that the absolute best we can even aspire to is to get them back to the natural? They're no threat to the devil. But if God could ever get a hold of his people, shh, and I know God is. I said, I know God is. God could ever get a hold of your and my life. And if he could ever get us out of operating and spending so much of our time and energy in the natural and get us, someone say, in the spirit. Say it again, say in the spirit. To we live a life of supernaturalism. Woo! The devil has no chance. I said, do you, know, do you understand when you're walking in this realm how much forces? <laughs> do you know how much, how much time in this city we've got the devil bottled up? Come on. He's not infinite. I'm going to say it again. He's not infinite. I want to tell you again. I don't know if you can. I give you a little secret in the Holy Ghost. He's not infinite. He doesn't have infinite power. He doesn't have infinite might. He doesn't have infinite energy. You know how much time he's spending trying to knock this thing down? He's he working overtime. He's got witches and witch covens. I know it. God show me in the spirit. They're spending all their time and energy. I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not doing once or twice. They're fighting against us and fighting against us and fighting against us. But what they don't understand is not only will they not defeat us, they're not even got a chance. But God has got them so preoccupied with that that he's over here doing this thing over here and over here doing that thing over there. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! 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 And... I love this too. I got <laughs> then Elijah and me, when the man, when the armies came up, Elijah prayed a second prayer. Now, Lord, blind them. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, when you start walking in the spirit, not only will God open your eyes, not only will God open the eyes of those that are around you, but God will also blind the eyes of the enemy. He'll think you're there. He'll full all, full, put all his energy to fight you there, and you're standing over here. He don't even know where you are. Come on. How do you remember when they were ready to cast Jesus down headlong? They drove him to the precipice. I got to come in for a landing here. Come on. They were trying to, they drove him to the precipice of the hill. They were going to cast him down headlong. And then all of a sudden, bam, the Bible says he just walked through their midst, and they were looking around going, where did he go? Hallelujah. 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 Come on. We're going to live a life in the supernatural, not in the natural. Not just to get our needs met. That's just the bare beginning. We're going to live a life in the supernatural so we can bring forth to a lost and dying world the demonstration and manifestation of an almighty God and de declare to the world that God is who he claims to be. How many want to go to another level? Amen. Come on, how many want to go to another level? Amen. Come on, how many want to go to another level? Yes. Father, we give you praise. Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Come on, lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Shakara ma shande. Shakara ma 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 shakara ma shande. Come on, I want to hear you pray. Come on, ma shande. Shakara ma ma shande. Shandara ma 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 ka ka ma shande Shandara be ka ba 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 shande Shandara ba ka ka nde Shiri andara ba ka ka nde Just for a moment, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost Shahande Jesus 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 Now this, this 
Be seated for just a moment. Still early. I want to give you one. Can I give you one more thing? Come on, can I give you one more thing? Come on, come on. Whew. Jesus, in the triumphal entry, God showed me that this is a prophetic roadmap of what's going to happen in the end times. That Jesus, the visible manifestation of the glory of God, that the glory was coming back to the church before the glory comes for the church. And God is going to deal with every force of doubt and unbelief. Now, I prophesied to you. Please understand. I make statements here that I know sometimes people in their minds don't really understand. I say we're not a typical We're not interested in just being your typical church. Sometimes the devil lies to people and says, oh, well, then they won't care about my needs. I couldn't be further from the truth. I care so much about your needs, but I won't want you to spend your life simply running back to God just to get your needs met. He came to give you abundant life, not existence. on we don't want to have a you don't want to have a church where they're having to change people's diapers for 20 years nothing wrong with diaper changing when they're a baby huh prophesied to you that God that there was a great dividing line coming between the church of the natural and the church that is directed by the spirit and the reason it's going to happen is God is going to himself judge it. Just a little soft. Jesus walked up. Give me just a hair more on this. Mike, please. Jesus walked up to a fig tree. It was covered with leaves. And what you have to know about a fig tree is it grows its fruit first. And then when the leaf grows and they cover the fruit, it is a sign that there's ripened fruit on the tree. Unlike other trees where the leaves come first, then the fruit. On the fig tree, the fruit comes first, then the leaf. So if you see a fig tree with leaves on it, you expect to find fruit. Jesus goes up to the tree, looks behind the leaf, and there's no fruit. And he curses the tree. And he says, no more fruit, I'm gonna paraphrase, will come from you forever. Which means it had produced some fruit at some time. Come on. How many know Jesus knew? Was it just spewing words? He knew this tree had produced some fruit at some time because he was speaking by the Spirit. You will no longer produce. You used to produce fruit. Now all you have is the appearance of fruitfulness, but you have no real fruit. You used to operate in the Spirit. Say, how can you make that transition? Because the Bible says, the fruit of the, the fruit of the, oh my God. You used to operate in the spirit, but now you all have, all you have is the appearance, but you have no spirit. You don't have the real. You have the appearance of it. All you do is you're stuck in the natural. And I am that which is in my kingdom. I am going to eradicate that. And that thing withered up and died from the roots. Then his disciples the next morning, he spoke that thing at night on the way out. Next morning they come back in and they see verse 20, Mark chapter 11, verse 20. Somebody's going to get something here. 
Come on, I said someone's going to get something here. Come on, someone's going to get something here. Come on, is this all right? We take time to do this. Come on, Revelation doesn't unfold in a 25-minute message. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just doesn't get there. We got to... And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw that the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, I'm reading from the King James, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answered, saith unto them, Have faith in God. What a curious answer. Put it in your spirit. How many ready for a bombshell right now? We have always interpreted that as he was trying to teach them how they could perform that kind of miracle. It's not what he was doing. He was exposing why he had to give the judgment. The problem, the reason I, this fig tree withered up and died, it was a symbol of those that were in the natural compared to those that were in the spirit. And I'm telling you, if you don't want to wither up and die, you got to have faith in God. Come on, y'all hear me? You got to have, but that word, that phrase, I'm almost done. Uh, That phrase, have faith in God, it's bigger than that. In the original, it doesn't really mean have faith in God. I think the translators were afraid to write what it really meant. How many want to know what it really meant? You can look it up. Not, not, it's not have faith in God. It says have the faith of God. What are you saying? He's saying not, no, I don't want you just to have faith in God. You are to have God's faith. The very faith that was in Jesus is the very faith that God is putting inside of you. You're not going to have to struggle. You're not going to have to wrestle. You're not going to have to try to wind it up. You just simply need to have the faith of God. He was speaking it into them. He was releasing an anointing upon them. Oh, my Father God. Come on, they were about to face the greatest trials. They were about to go into the world and preach the gospel. He was about to be crucified and raised from the dead. And he was releasing upon them something. He was releasing upon them a word that was going to come to pass when they stood in that upper room and the spirit of faith came upon them. Someone say the devil's a liar. Shh, lift your hands. Lift your hand and say, Father, I choose to have your faith. I choose to have your faith. I choose to have your faith. Come on, give him a hand of praise. Listen, Father, we give you praise. Shakarande. Shakaranda Sunday. Say it one more time, God. Now, guys, I need you to shift that a little bit. You got to flow with me where I'm going in the spirit on this. Say, God has not planned any defeats for me. Please hear me. The reason so many Christians are defeated is because most Christians in American church are stuck just trying to work and operate the natural. And the devil's got them spending all their time running after these things. But God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
And all these things will be added to you. Come on. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. Huh? By His stripes ye were healed. Come on, He's the God of reconciliation. It's already done. It's already done. Come on, it's already done. Why are you spending all your life struggling for what's already accomplished? Jesus, we'll pray for you tonight. We're going to receive the tithes and offerings tonight. Father, we give you praise. Shakara, my ushers, if you get ready to come forward, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. Shakara bashande. Shakara bashande. Shakara bashande. Shakara bashande. I want a little more victory. Shaka ba 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 shaka ba shande. Shaka ba 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 kaka ba shaka ba shande. Shaka ba 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 shande. Shaka a victory song, victory, some victory. Shahande, come on, we've overcome. Shaka ba ba shande. Shaka ba shaka ba 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 shaka hande. Shaka ba ba shaka ba 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 Shaka ba 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 shande. I should just come on forward. Woo, I feel his presence. Yes, shaka na 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 shaka ba 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 shaka ba 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 shaka ba 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 shaka shaka ba na 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 ba shaka. It's already done. Come on, it's already done. Come on, it's already done. Come on, your needs are already met. My God shall supply. It's already done. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's already done. Come on, it's already done. My God, come on. By his stripes you were healed. It's already done. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's already done. Where the spirit of the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's already done. This is the victory that's overcome the world. Even our faith. It's already done. It's already done. Come on. God never intended for you to spend most of your life just trying to fight to get back to normal. He intended to you to go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Oh my God. Come on. Shakara mama mashandene. Take those tires and offerings. Speak over them. Speak over them. Speak over them. Windows of heaven be open. Come on, speak over them. Receive it. When you put it in. 